We have ourselves an Opus 15 here, finished doing a complete upgrade. We're going to pop inside, have a chat to Dan and um, have a look at what we did in this one. Good morning Dan. G'day. So uh, this is a little Opus hybrid with, um, so it's about a 15 foot van and it's owned by a single um, female who um, is planning on travelling uh, a little bit around Australia um, she's going to be working from the van so the van came with a very small electrical package in it um, that was really only able to run fridge at the end of the day um, so what we've discussed with her is putting in a system that uh, gives her the capacity to run um, all of the items like chargers and, and um, laptop chargers and uh, all the bits and pieces that she needs to run. She's possibly going to run Starlink. Um, uh, while she's travelling, plus she wants to be able to run her air conditioner when she's parked up on the side of the road for short periods of time. Um, she wants to be able to run an induction cooker. So what we've done is we've removed all of the old charging system which was a um, uh, a standard factory package so it did have a DC DC uh, which was a solar regulator and a battery charger um, 200 amp hour of lithium but the lithium batteries that were in the van didn't have the capacity to be able to run um, a large inverter um, so we've removed all of that and we've put in um, a 280 amp hour battery, a 2600 watt inverter. Uh, we've taken the existing rooftop solar down through a solar regulator and we've also taken um, the solar regulator input of the DC-DC charger out to the side of the van so she can plug in um, a bunch of, of portable panels. So the roof of these little hybrids is actually quite heavy. Um, this is a manual lift roof, um, so we were very conscious of the fact that we didn't want to add additional weight to the roof. So the solar panels that are up there, there's about 330 watts of solar on the roof. So nominally when she's uh, traveling around, that's going to be sufficient to be able to you know, facilitate recharge for fridge and that sort of thing. Once she starts using the inverter, running the air conditioner as it's just come on um, she's going to need to plug in those portables because otherwise she's going to run out of battery very quickly uh, this isn't a massive air conditioner because obviously it's only a small van so it doesn't actually utilize uh, it doesn't actually take a lot of energy to use it uh, probably runs at about 40 to 50 amps on the dc side so it's pretty good 280 amp hour battery should be able to get you know comfortably three, four hours out of that without stressing the system out too much. The other thing we've done in this van is we've added an Eberspatcher diesel heater. Um, so in winter time, she's gonna be super comfortable in here. Um, I might just switch that off, I think. So there's the controls for the heater. Just turning the air conditioner off. Just turn the air conditioner off. Um, so we've also got let me just the Eberspatcher diesel heater control over on the side there. Plus we put the Enerdrive inverter controller in and the EPRO uh, battery monitor. So the battery system in the van originally didn't have um, a shunt based battery monitor either. So they just worked off voltage and current um, separately. Um, so that wasn't a good indication of, of how much charge you had in your battery. So we've given, given her a proper shunt um, based battery monitor. The other thing we've done in this van as well is added a couple of Sirocco fans. So we've added one into the roof here. Um, we've added one um, on the inside of the door, just inside the door so she can actually direct. Um, it's very small in here, hence yeah. all the moving around guys. Yeah. Sorry about the it's only a little making van. you get in with the camera. Uh, yeah, so it's it's only a little van, so the, the two fans will be able to be used for just moving air around when it's not super hot. So one over the bed and one over the um, living space. Living space. Yep. Yeah, nice. 
Um, and as you can see underneath the bed here, um, this is where the original system was mounted. Um, but as you can see, we've, we've adjusted that now to, to suit the new system. So like I say, we've, we've reused the existing solar panels. Um, there, was, there was a bit of a concern that they weren't working properly um, or they weren't as efficient as they possibly could have been. When we were testing, we actually found a, um, a bit of a rubbish connection on the, on the solar connectors. So once I re-terminated that, I did, a full, um, I did a full PV test on the panels um, and the panels actually were performing okay. Um, so uh, once I reconnected that solar, the MC4, it sorted that out and fixed up the recharge. So like I say, um, it's a bit of an unusual system. There's a lot of constraints with hybrids, um, unless you end up with, you know, hydraulic lifting roofs and, and all this sort of stuff. You gotta be really conscious of the weight that's on the roof because otherwise it just becomes so hard to lift them. These are already, this is already quite a difficult little roof to get up um you know the one of the um one of the lifters that is in the bathroom and the other one's at the end of the bed so you got to kind of climb up on the bed and and mm -hmm. lift that up um so yeah i mean we we have to try and think about the best possible usability and functionality for the owner of the caravan to make sure that this isn't going to be a pain in the bum for them to use because at the end of the day you just want to be able to get in your caravan hook mm -hmm. it up, drive away, go to your campsite, set it up, done. Yeah. So it was hard for you with your strength and I know it was certainly hard for me to do it by myself. Yeah. So, yeah, but owned by a, a woman, yeah, she has to be able to lift it up with, with ease. So hence the um, additional external option to put in the portable solar panels. Yeah, it's definitely not our preferred. Obviously, we like to get as much solar on the roof as, as we can possibly get because it's just a no-brainer then it's it's on the roof it's done but so in this setting up and it, kind of less setting yeah, up and that sort of thing but mm -hmm. in this application and this particular setup it just isn't realistic to expect that mm -hmm. obviously you can do modifications to the hinges and and lifters and all those sorts of things if you wanted to in this van you could put some hydraulic lifters in the van but i don't think that's a reasonable modification to do um so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We we have given um, heating in the van. We've given the ability to have cooling in the van, airflow, a really nice power system that's going to be able to do everything that um, the owner wants. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it with this one, guys. It's a, it's a pretty basic little system. Uh, it's pretty usable. As I say, it's a very small van, it's nice and contained, and this will be perfect for the owner. And she can run her air conditioner. And she can run her perfect. air conditioner. So, you know, as I say, the, the air con works off the inverter. There you go, straight on. All right, cheers guys. See you on the next one.